and welcome to Real Economy. Around 87 million people in Europe have some kind of disability. And many of us are likely to face one in our lifetimes, be it from an accident or illness. Having a job is the best way to ensure independence and social inclusion. But less than half of people with disabilities are in work. Coming up, we meet the woman breaking down barriers in the workplace and I quiz the Commissioner for Equality on what actions being taken. But first, Fanny Gore heads to Spain where success stories are underway. The number of people with disabilities entering the job market in Spain has risen by more than 20% in the last six years. That increases thanks to extra public funding and programmes. In Madrid, the ONCE Foundation supports projects that aim to help improve the lives of people with disabilities. Projects like Digital Talent, a job placement program that offers digital and technological training. Alicia has a hearing impairment. The 23-year-old recently got a job as an app tester after completing a training program with Digital Talent. When my colleagues are speaking, I can't concentrate, so they gave me a quiet space to work. It means I now have less headaches. They're also looking to buy me noise-reducing headphones. Alicia's state-run company has adopted a social integration plan tailored to the needs of individual employees. I think the key is good communication between the work manager and the employee with regard to the work they're doing and what they may need. The company must reflect what society really is. The Digital Talent course aims to provide trainees with skills in new technologies. David is in charge of the foundation's professional integration program. We're taking advantage of a huge niche in the job market, training people who will be just as productive as people who don't have a disability. The programme is partially funded by the European Social Fund. In 2021, it helped train more than 5,000 young people. People with disabilities should be present in all sectors of society. As for Alicia, she says she now feels fully part of the jobs market. That's a top priority for the European Pillar of Social Rights, which seeks to help more people with disabilities find work. Fanny's next stop is Krakow in Poland to meet a woman who's blazing a trail for equality in the workplace. I'm meeting Monica here in Krakow. She's an expert in diversity and integrating people with disabilities into the workplace. I have a motoric disability. I got sick when I was two. And my um, general disease is dermatomyositis, which is causing limitations in my moving around, but also it has brought me internal um, diseases. Heading to Monica's home, she tells me about her time at university and how it was key to entering the jobs market. In Europe, around 30% of people with a disability get a higher education degree compared to 40% of people with no disabilities. I was lucky enough that my parents were always explaining me that I can't be working physically. I need to work with my mind. I was planning to graduate from pedagogical university, but it was inaccessible for me in terms of uh, city transport. A language graduate, Monica says she was eventually able to find her dream job after a lot of hard work. But even if many companies are open to employing a person who has a disability, another obstacle facing many trying to find work is the fear they will lose their disability benefits. I think that lifting limits would be very beneficial because I have lots of expenses, for example, for my medicines on a monthly basis. And even if I'm working, it's always challenging to cover all the expenses. Looking to the future, Monica says improving financial support, disability access and social integration in the workplace will be key to breaking down barriers. I think education is the key. 
and awareness uh, among all employees to be inclusive and thinking of other people like they would be thinking about themselves. There are more and more people with disabilities around us. Like me, they deserve really great opportunities at work to be active and to live their lives to the fullest. Well, here at the European Parliament, there is legislation, the European Employment Directive. And last year, the European Commission adopted the Disability Rights Strategy, which sets out initiatives that support the right to live independently and to participate equally in all areas of life. To find out more about what's being done at a European level, I'm going to be speaking to Commissioner for Equality, Helena Daly. Why are we still in a situation in Europe where people with disabilities face so many obstacles to get into the workplace? Where to begin? It's, uh, it's a problem uh, which we really need to address. People with a disability, but they encounter so many problems. And uh, when it comes to entering the labour market, even beginning earlier, with their education, for instance, and access to education. So really, uh, we have to look at this reality uh, from the perspective of the rest of society, what it is doing in order to enable its citizens to enter the labour market. Employers should provide reasonable accommodation for, for people with disabilities. What is the European Commission doing to tackle these barriers? Well, we have the, the strategy, uh, now the, the, the disability uh, strategy, and in this strategy we deal with, with what we are talking here about, you know, so, so there's the disability employment package, whereby we, we speak about the need of this reasonable uh, accommodation and how to uh, encourage and help um, people with disabilities to enter the labour market and we, we have the disability uh, platform uh, for instance also where, where different organisations uh, meet and ex exchange good practices. As I make it a point that I meet uh, persons with disabilities because they are the experts about their reality there and, and we share what, what we learn with social partners, and and there's this this uh, conversation going on. Commissioner, many thanks indeed for being with us here on Real Economy. Thank you.